Wow. So when I was finishing school, I wanted to do film. Okay. And obviously, um, in an African household, your parents were not about like, that. Oh, where? Yeah. Film? When I was actually ready to quit the entire campaign. Oh, so And they were paying really highly. You're not just the creator that everybody oh. else sees. Oh. You're like, you know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. I like money talks. I feel yeah. like we should have more money talks. Hi. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm just hot. Yeah. Nairobi's been hot. It really has yeah. been. It, but it's it's like a nice mix of like rain and sunshine. Yeah, I like this weather. Yeah. Okay. My name is Temina. Mm -hmm. I am a lifestyle content creator. I used to do fashion content, but now I switched completely to lifestyle because I find it easier. Right. But I'm also a lawyer. Yeah. So that's that's, that's a bit about me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Hallie. I'm a I what, like fashion, travel, mm. lifestyle. I think it encompasses most of my life, and that's kind of how it started too. Is just sharing bits that I love, and I love fashion. I love to travel, and just the little bits in between. Okay. Yeah. I love your content. Thanks. I love yours too. <laughs> Thank you. So this is an interesting one. What led you to start creating, and what's been your experience so far? Yeah, that's an. I never set out with like the intention of, oh, I'm going to become a content creator. I don't yeah. even think it existed at that time or if I knew what it was. Um, but I got in, I had an internship like straight after, uh, straight after high school. Okay. Um, and it was at a magazine and I interned as their social media intern. And that was when mm. it was like... Social media was coming up, your, you know, companies mm -hmm. were starting to maybe put out an Instagram handle, a Twitter handle, you know, so that's what I was doing, and then I, like, started their Instagram account for them, and then oh. at the time I was like, oh, maybe I'll put what I've learned to my own page, mm -hmm. but I was, like, sharing where I was, you know, eating, what I was wearing, I had a little blog in high school on Blogspot back Ooh. in the day, and I'd just share my little horrible outfits. <laughs> Um, and then I moved to New York and continued just doing what I was doing, just sharing what I loved. And then I had a brand reach out and it took me about three months to get back to them because I thought it was spam because oh, I was wow. like, how are you going to send me codes <laughs> yeah. and then pay me? Yeah. It like seemed ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's how it started. Okay. How about you? How did you start your um, creation journey? It's so funny because I was thinking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. It's because, okay, I grew up watching a lot of movies, series. Yeah. I was that child, like, if you wanted me to shut up and sit down, you'd put the TV on and I wouldn't move for hours. Right. Yeah, and so it was always, like, I was in school, but I always loved movies. Mm -hmm. So when I was finishing school, I wanted to do film. Okay. And obviously, um, in an African household... Yeah, your parents were not about like, that. Oh, where? Yeah. Film? They were like, no, you're going to do... Law, because I also liked law. It's not that okay. I hated law, but mm -hmm. I had more of a passion for the creative side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like, fine. Since I like law, I'll do law. Because I was also like, yeah, okay. Yeah, how am I going to, you know, yeah. earn money? So I did law. But then law school was really hard right. most of the time. So I was like, okay, if I'm not going to be able to do film, mm -hmm. I'm going to film my little videos on the side to give me an illusion that of, you're... yeah, like I'm, I'm still doing film. Yeah. Yeah, so I would go, I would learn how to edit, how to film. So I just started putting out videos on like YouTube. I actually started on YouTube. So really? I would, because I liked editing. I liked the whole process ah. of taking like three hours to find the right song Yeah. for like 10 seconds. I love that so... you love that when I yeah. think other people are like, that's the worst <laughs> part, trying to find yeah. a song. I loved it. I loved it so much. So I was like, okay, law school is bad, but with this, now now it's fine. I can yeah. do it for the, yeah. So it was like my outlet for like the longest time. Right. Yeah. And then at a point, it's when someone approached me as well. I was like, what do you, honestly, I could have done it for free. Because, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, what do you mean you want to pay me to do this? Right. Yeah. So I was like, fine. Okay. And that's how it just started. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how long have you been doing it now? The, okay, I, I get confused by this question because I was putting out videos since like 2017. If you go yeah. on YouTube, you'll find my really bad 
videos when I thought I was a comedian. I had phases. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I'd no, love I wasn't to see that. funny, this. though. Okay, it's okay. But <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll look back and it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't believe it. I had so much audacity. But yeah, so from 2017. But now I started doing content creation, like, professionally, mm-hmm. I'd say, 20, around the pandemic time. Right. Yeah, yeah, when there was a whole shift, when brands were like, okay, since everyone is in the house, social Gotta media is online. our biggest asset yeah, yeah. So that's when I shifted to doing it professionally and when we, when did you like shift um so I again I think I started around about 2017 when mm-hmm. I moved to New York would be when I'd say like it kind of picked up or I was more intentional about okay. posting yeah um but my blog spot started when I was in high school so like oh, wow. 20 maybe 13 or 2012 is when I had my little blog spot. Is it's it called still up? I, oh, absolutely not. I oh. took down everything. <laughs> Why? No, it was, there's was like one photo shoot I did and I thought I was Rihanna and like I'd copied her look from oh. one of her music videos. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that you can't find that anymore. <laughs> Why? I would love yeah. to find it. I'm sure someone can find it somewhere. Please don't. We'll try. I'll yeah. try my best. No, no, no. It's okay. It can stay. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been a number of years, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, 2012 is a number of years. Yeah. Do you still like it? I do. I think it, like, every... I think as it grows, too, there's, like, so many new things that come about or different roles that you take on that you, you know, didn't have before, but the love of, like, creating and sharing is always there. there. What's your favorite brand collaboration and why? I have two. Um, off the top of my head, I'd yeah. say Spotify, mm-hmm. um, and I'd also say Dairyland and Java. Oh, I love! I loved it. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that so was so cute. So fun. So yeah, and why the Dairyland and Java one is because my concept was crazy. I was there yeah. telling them I'm gonna be in a waitress outfit, on skating in Java, and they were like, "What?" Yeah. And I said, "Yeah, please, please let me do it." And they were like, "I mean, yeah." Yeah, and it was so fun because the whole day I was just skating around Java. I love just, that. Yeah, it was so fun. It was so cute. It was, it was and as a lactose-free girl, I was yeah, like, yes, I was this so is excited. great. And then Spotify is because they gave me like complete creative freedom. They were yeah. just like, do what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's then, fine. Oh, we that's do, great. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah. So it was yeah. really fun. Yeah. yeah. And you? I would have to say the number one. Uh, brand collaboration was with Hikaya, which is a clothing brand. Mm -hmm. And I was able to, you know, I kind of, when I was younger, always wanted to create my own designs. So they gave me the platform to, like, create my own designs, have, you know, the concept for the marketing and, you know, being a part of the whole process. So I'd say that was my favorite. And, like, getting to see... Because sometimes you don't get to see the impact of Mm -hmm. what you're sharing, but also being on the back end and being like... Oh, people do buy when you yeah. say, like, when you put something out yeah. there. So that was really cool to see. No, the designs and the videos were all so cute. Oh, I loved you. all the launches because they were... And with you, I feel like we can really tell when it's you and yeah. when it's, like, not you. Because, Aww. you know, if it's, like, let's say you're filming and you're in a room that's, like, pink, orange, blue, and I'd be like, yeah. what did they... <laughs> yeah, who is What that? did they <laughs> do? Who is that? <laughs> yeah, what, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it really looked like it was you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. It was really fun. So here's the next one. Do you prefer complete freedom or a big budget? That's a hard one. It is a tricky one, huh? Yeah, I'd say complete creative freedom because I've worked with brands that were like, they were monitoring my every mm-hmm. move down to the music. And I remember I was right. telling you, uh, my favorite part is like finding the yeah. music. They were like, no, we don't like that music. And this is when I was actually ready to quit the entire campaign. Awesome. And they were paying really highly. But when they were for that music editing, I said, fine, then do it yourself. Exactly. Because like, why did well, you hire why me? Did you hire me? And yeah. the worst was when she sent me, so she sent me a link of an example of another creator who was on the campaign. And she was like, do it exactly like this. And I was like, okay, but if you wanted like this, you should have just increased her her budget and paid her to do two videos instead of including me. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say complete creative freedom. Yeah. I feel like 
I don't know. Because, like, sometimes with a big budget, you're able yeah. to create more. Let's say, if it, you know, it's a big budget, and you're like, well, this would, like, look really good on this part of the coast, and you true. get to, like, fly to the coast. So I feel like, I don't know, but I don't know if I should... I like the big budget, why lie? Mm. I do. I do. Yeah, I also like the big budget. I just feel completely paralyzed yeah. when I can't do what I'm supposed to do. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's my problem. That's fair. Yeah. If you had to pick one outcome in a collaboration, mm. would you choose a tight turnaround or delayed payment? Tight turnaround. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. I'm like a psycho. I love when I see six-day execution. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, yes. So I can film today, edit tomorrow, and get right. it. Yeah, I but love and like it. it's only fair when you do like a tight turnaround, and they also are on time with their payment. Exactly. Because if they do a tight turnaround and then they sometimes do a delay the payment, payment, then why were you hiring me? Up? Exactly. You should have taken our time. Right. Yeah, but I like tight turnarounds also because I don't like when a campaign runs for too long. Mm-hmm. Like you tell me the idea in January, we're executing in March. I right. forgot it. My, yeah. Your creative yeah. juices have like They've died. run out. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. What are some challenges you face as a creator? I think the hard part sometimes is being, you're not just the creator that everybody oh. else sees. Oh. You're like, you know, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, learning to do your own finances or like read your own contracts, okay. like those are things that people just don't see that That's become, true. that you have to kind of learn really quickly. So quickly. Um, that, yeah, I think, and then also like being here in Kenya and kind of telling people, oh, I'm a content creator and they look at you and they're like, <laughs> what's, what's that? that? <laughs> yeah. Do you make money? Yeah. Like, oh, what, what else do you do? And you're yeah. Like, it's or is that job. a hobby? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like no respect to it. So I'd say there's that. What That's about true. you? Yeah, I feel like picking up on that one, especially the fact that I'm also a lawyer. Mm. So I feel like sometimes the mix is so funny because someone will ask you like, oh, so like what are your like legal goals? And like most of the time I'm like, I'm so sorry. This side right now is making me more money. Right. So I'm mostly concentrating on this side. Yeah. And so they're so shocked because they're like, what do you, what do you mean? Right. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah. yeah. And they also don't take it as seriously. They're like, that's a hobby. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I like both. So I feel like the, for me, my first challenge is like the balance. Mm. Yeah. Because like last year, I feel like I almost lost my mind. I can because, imagine. Yeah. I had like... I had my bar exams right. in November, and that's at the same time, for the first time ever, my manifestations decided to come true. Oh and gosh. I had five brands oh on the goodness. same month as my bar exam. That's wild. And I think I lost my mind every single day because sometimes I was filming till like 2 a.m. And my exam is the next right. day. So are you studying? or yeah, you, yeah, I'm like, yeah. So I feel like for me, my biggest challenge was... Balance. The balance. Mm-hmm. I was not sleeping. I'd just go. I was like, I was dying. Yeah, so the balance has been the hardest one. And I feel like the second one has been trying to not, trying to keep your identity mm. away from, because sometimes I feel like you tie your identity to your social media. Oh, yeah. So you find like, if something is not doing as well, you're attaching it to your worth. It's like, right. am I not good enough? Exactly. I, and the yeah. algorithm will get into, like, yeah. it will, you know, start just yeah. sometimes it's Doing good. its things. Exactly. You know, sometimes yeah. it's bad and, yeah. yeah so, like, that. separating the two, that's mm-hmm. what I was learning last year. And that was the big challenge because I was like, you're not your views or your followers. You're, like, a separate person. And then, like, this is a separate thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, those are my, I feel like those are the two challenges yeah I, de- I can definitely relate to that of like yeah you know feeling kind of away when something doesn't or like you yeah. put in like this one so video that work. you've put in so much work into yeah. and then the one that you just like quickly shot put up it's always like that ex- and you're like really oh, yeah really? the one that you do nothing exactly you just talk for two seconds and then it's like it takes this off. is great <laughs> it's terrible so what are some of your techniques for growing and engaging with your audience Okay, it's so funny because one of the challenges is actually my techniques. So when I'm saying separating me as a person from... Mm. So that's what I did last year. And then I found that this was actually my technique for engaging with my audience. So it was like, I decided um, to show up on social media Mm -hmm. just as me. 
basically. Mm. So that's how I, I had like a shift from, I used to do like fashion content, yeah, which was fun, but I found that I was not, I like to talk, like mm-hmm. I... I'm a yapper. If I mean, you, that's why you're a lawyer too. Yeah, yeah if you get to know me, you. I look shy at first, but my friends, I'm always talking. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, the fact that I'm not talking on my social media, I used to make creating content really hard because it was like, I felt like I was, um, I would want to film and I'd be tired because I'm like, no, but I want to mm-hmm. talk. And so last year I was like, Let, then let's talk then. Yeah. Yeah, so I decided to just show up as, the yapa I am. Mm-hmm. And then I was so shocked when a lot of people were relating to what, to what I was saying. Uh. And so I was like, why wasn't I just yapping from the beginning? Right. And it was so much easier because I could just take my phone and talk for five minutes. Yeah. And that was content for like two days. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Compared to when I was doing like my, my other content, it's like I would have to take a whole day and then I was Set doing like transitions. And yeah. It, yeah, it takes so much time. So when I was doing what came easy to me, mm. what I was scared to do, that's when it became easier to engage with my audience. Yeah. Yeah, so I feel like that's my first technique. It's just being yourself, even right. when you think it's cringy or scary. Because I also don't like my voice, even I though I talk a lot. I can relate. Like I can, yeah. when I do, like I've started a little bit doing yeah. like a get ready yeah, with me and like yeah. speak. But, like, I can't edit with the sound on. Same. Oh, like, I'll, yeah. I'll see my mouth. Like, I'll know where it is from, like, seeing, like, my mouth move. But, like, I can't. I, I, you, I don't you, listen to you the don't audio. listen? Nope. Yeah, I listen to it once, twice. If someone is watching it in front of me, please yep, go I can to cry. the next mm-hmm. room. I don't want to hear myself because I don't like my voice. Yep. But then I was like, I, this is my voice in this lifetime, so right. I'm going to talk. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like my number one strategy was just being myself. And somehow... It's been working. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. What's That's your what are some of your techniques? I think I think it's also kind of sharing those tidbits of yourself. Yeah. As much as you want to keep some things to yourself. To yourself, I found that being just yeah, just a little bit more of like bringing cuz I think I was so everything was so curated for me in mm-hmm. terms of like everything like needed to be perfect or needed to yeah. be this or that way. And so more so now sharing, you know, like I, I think I shared a video on my stories recently where we like were having a little dance party, dance lesson mm-hmm. on a boat. And we were like, oh my gosh, we like we love to see this like yeah. other side of you, which is hard for me to share because there's also like, where do you draw the line? The line. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I tried to get back to everybody's comments. I try to be in my DMs as much as I can. Oh, yeah. Um, and then this new broadcast channel on Instagram oh, has been kind that. of fun. Yeah. And, like, watching other people's or, like, being a part of somebody That's else's so broadcast fun. channel is fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, like, yeah, just trying to be in DMs if people have questions. Sometimes I, like, you know, you kind of see people's, like, little faces in their, yeah. you know, profile pictures and, like, you kind of you know, you're like, oh, she always comments on my, like, yeah. you have some sort of relationship with yeah. them, even though you don't know them. So that's, that's been a fun side that I've, like, tried to tap into more yeah. in the last year. Yeah, because I feel like the internet has had, like, a shift mm-hmm. from, it was more, like, curated, but now people yeah. are, like, even though you're having, like, aesthetics and, like, right. perfectness, like, yeah. we would also like to just know a little bit of who you are right. as well. Yeah. Yeah, because... I feel like there's been a shift, and I'm liking the shift as well. Me too. It's more fun. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like TikTok too has brought that oh, yeah, side out. Yeah. Like I think I talk a lot more if on my TikTok do, yeah. than my Instagram. Just I don't know why I feel more it's comfortable. Yeah. But like I like that side of people and like seeing you know you're boring like oh you made your coffee today and yeah, then you same. look up you stretch like that's yeah. great. Yeah, same. I love, I love to those. see that. Same. Yeah. yeah. What is your creative process when receiving a brief and working with a brand? Okay, so I'd say mine, because this has been my thing since like last year. Mm-hmm. My creative process is like peak delusion. So oh, as I said, yeah. Delulu. When I was saying, I used to watch movies and series when I was young. It was yeah. to the point where I would watch them and I would know the entire script word for. So it was that annoying like cousin or sister who would watch and I'm, I'm, I'm reciting the entire script. So I feel like when I receive a brief, mm-hmm. I put myself in the position of 
what I would want to see mm. um, if I was watching a movie or a yeah. series or like a music video. I and like yes, yeah, so that's how I start. So yeah. I'll be like, what's the peak, like most delusional idea you can come up with? And then now if they reject that, that's when I'll like temper it down a little bit to right. fit. Yeah, and then also taking into account like not the trends really that are happening, but mm. more like, let's say people are... For example, like last year, there was this thing about like girl math. Right. Right. So it's like, and like, which made so dinner. much sense. Yeah, it made so much sense. So it's exactly. like, what's happening around me mm. that I can like link to this so that it's more relatable. Yeah. Because I also like aesthetics, but I also like relatability. So mm. I like to bring the two. Together. So if I can bring like aesthetics, what I'd watch in a movie, music video series together mm-hmm. with the relatability of what's happening mm. in. Society, that's when I know I have a good idea. Yeah. yeah. I mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. For me, I always try to like merge it into my life of mm-hmm. what I'm already doing. Oh. So like, you know, I I travel a lot, so I always yeah. try to see, okay, if I get a brand deal that, you know, somehow fits into this, how will mm-hmm. I make it be a part of my travel or how will I make it be a part of whatever's going on in my life? Okay. And like I always try to also accept brands that like I would naturally use or you know already use so it's just so easy to I think yeah making I always want to make it seem very natural so it doesn't Mm -hmm. quite seem as like a a sales pitch right um so yeah I just try to figure out a way to yeah blend it in I look through again yeah a little bit of the trends but not too much much, maybe like a trending song or something that's happening and find a way to tie it back in but yeah, my main thing is always like, how can I make this seem that it is a part of oh, my life or what I love I'm doing? That. It makes it even easier to film. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think yeah. if it's, you know, you're doing your makeup routine and it's a makeup product that you yeah. already love yes. and like know, you're like, this is great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I love that. Mm-hmm. You ready for a game? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Do you want to go first or should I go first? Let me, let me read yours first. Oh, gosh. Yes. Okay, clothing brand product highlight. See, sounds Great. like... Yeah, okay. okay. An everyday fashion brand has mm-hmm. a large range of clothes with pockets and wants creators who can style their key pieces, chinos, jeans, and dresses with pockets and highlight why you love pockets. Okay. They want you to channel summer vibes mm-hmm. and get inspired to put your own style into your 30 to 1 minute video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Content example, why I love pockets. I always have my lipstick ready. I hide my fidgety hands. My phone is my life or what's in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So deliverables is one video, 60 days boosting access on Instagram and one story sets two to three frames. Okay. Also, the bonus question is what would your rate be for this? Okay. So you said summer vibes, pockets. First thing I think of is probably I'll try to tie it in with a beach vacation. Mm -hmm. And my favorite thing about, and like kind of try to tie back into my life, favorite thing about having pockets is, you know, putting lipstick, powder, because I'm an oily girl, sunscreen, and like maybe your keys for your room, Mm -hmm. Um, and maybe a little pocket camera. So I would film it where I would maybe do the outfits, like outfits I'm wearing on vacation and then like pull out things from my pocket that would be in my pocket um, and kind of maybe film in at different locations around wherever I'm going to stay. Uh, Yeah, and like have sunscreen and, you know, we always complain and I kind of put it in there that, you know, as a girl that you always put your hands in your pockets but they never hold anything. So having clothes that where you can actually not have to ask somebody else. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I do like a transition somehow with outfits and a location showing all the different things and then have some beautiful frames of photos um, Mm -hmm. from the place. So for that, I would charge for the reel, Mm -hmm. obviously, and then I would do charge for each story frame too. Mm -hmm. Um, And then depending on if they wanted to... I've now put in 
um, with exclusivity if they want some, Ooh. like, if they want exclusivity and you not talk about another that party. Too. Exactly. Okay. So I put that in and then, yeah, with stories to per, per frame rather than, like, mm. sets. Because I feel like you now, like, story views, they get they, a they, lot, they, they, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it shouldn't just be, like, something that's, like, because a lot of brands are, like, oh, can you, like, add them for, for good free. measure? Exactly. Yeah. And you're, like, mm, Added no. value. It, I get added yeah. value. No, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so you ready for yours? Yeah. Okay, so it is a streaming service. Oh. Okay. The aim is to engage and no, encourage people to start using our streaming service mm-hmm. to get access to all their favorite shows in one place, highlighting features such as voice search and smart recommendations. The concept example is a movie night with friends where no one can decide what to watch or you're looking for a show and you don't know what platform it's on with voice and then with voice search. So your deliverables will be one video sharing both on TikTok and Instagram and then one story set, three slides. And what would your rate be for this? Okay, so I've seen the concept idea is on movie night, Mm -hmm. but for me, I would like to kind of like, um, I would call it something like, oh, actually, wait, 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 I have, I would completely flip it. Uh-huh. So remember when I said that my ideas are always peak delusion? The other right. day I was talking to my friend and they were telling me that I could literally write a list of the Lulu Girl series recommendations because that's what I do. I, so like from Gossip Girl to like yeah. Bowtie, all those. So I feel like what I would do is I would do like a maybe either a sit down video or it would be me with my friends and mm-hmm. I would be giving them the Lulu Gal series mm-hmm. recommendations in the reels, but then I would use the voice search in the video to show them how they can search and then watch it yeah. in real time. Right. So I feel like I would want to capture a real time example of me using the voice search mm-hmm. um, while giving. So after I've given the, the Lulu Girl series list, I would then voice search one and then the video would end with uh, now after oh. the voice search without watching. Yeah. Okay. Good. It's done? Yeah, you okay. did it. Okay. You did it. Um, I like that. Yeah. And then what would you do for your story? Rates. Okay. So for my stories, I actually have like a package deal because mm-hmm. most times, as I said, I'm a yapper. So mm-hmm. we are not going to get this in one story. So yeah. I started charging for like a bundle. Oh, that so makes if sense. You, yeah, yeah. If you want like a bundle of four, I have a rate for that. A bundle of eight, I have a rate for that okay. other than like one story each. Right. And then for also, I would also charge for the real because mm-hmm. you have to charge separately for TikTok oh, yeah. and for They're Instagram. Two, yeah. So two separate rate cards, one for TikTok and one for Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then it also depends on the brand mm-hmm. because um, for like, I have a rate card for smaller brands okay. and then I have a rate card for bigger brands. So when right. I want to work with small businesses that I really like, yeah. I give them my small business rate card yeah. and then for bigger brands, I give the bigger one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I do it. I like that. That yeah. works. Okay, so um, what has been your experience when it comes to collaborating with brands? Hmm. I feel like it started out very chaotic Mm -hmm. because these people didn't know I was a lawyer. And so they gave me a very bad contract. Mm -hmm. And it was even, I was not even a lawyer at that time. I think I was in like first year. But I remember reading it and it was really at a bad time because I was doing contract law. So I was really, you know, I had the concept. Yeah. On my fingertips. And I was reading this contract. And so they had said that um, they would pay me only if I made a certain number of sales. But they hadn't mentioned that um, in the meeting. So it was like they had first, the first red flag was like they had like 40. The contract was 40 pages long. Right, so you don't have to read it. Yeah, Yeah. I was like, why is a contract 40 pages long for one post? And so they said like, okay, yeah. Like, in the fine print down there, they were like, if you make this certain number of sales, Mm -hmm. that's when we'll pay you. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that was chaotic. So I had to be like, why is my payment tied to sales? Because I'm a content creator, not a sales person. So it started out chaotic like that. Like, Mm -hmm. I would have very weird contracts that have, like, a fine print at the bottom that say some crazy things. Um, And so I started having to really stand up for myself like Mm -hmm. in meetings and everything or they would do weird things like they would invite you over to the company Mm -hmm. and then you'd be in like the boardroom and so everyone is there from the CEO to the managing directors and then they would put you at like the 
head of the table. Right. And then they would give you now the, a terrible deal and give you the contract then, then, and they're like... The pressure, signed. right? Yeah, and now yeah. the pressure of, like, you know, and then the CEO is chiming in like, this is such a good deal, and you know this is a terrible deal. Yeah. But the pressure of everyone in the room just being like, sign now, sign now, right. is when you're like, should I sign? Should I not sign? And I ended up signing one because there was so much pressure. But yeah, so it started out chaotic like that, and then I really had to learn how to negotiate, mm find out like the red flag so now it's a lot better because I mostly only take deals that either I use the products already or I would like it sounds like it's aligning to me or it's a brand that I already like and Mm -hmm. I also really thoroughly read the contracts Mm -hmm. to make sure there's nothing weird happening there we also I also had an experience with another weird contract just the other day where they were like they can change anything at in the contract at any time with no notice And this was just last year. So I feel like it's good because sometimes um, I do get a lot of creative freedom. It's fun. It's brands that you like. But also it could be a little bit chaotic Mm -hmm. um, in terms of contracts and negotiation. Yeah. 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 I would say the same too. Like a little chaotic with what Mm -hmm. brands want or sometimes, you know, they, they just like don't take into consideration that this is somebody's job on the other side yeah. you're not just here for a good time like you're trying <laughs> to make a living too yeah. um yeah so that's that's been hard and then also standing up for myself has taken yeah. a long time for me to go back and you know because sometimes you know you'll have a quiet month and a brand comes in and yeah. you're like oh like maybe yeah, I should take it, it. Yeah. but then you know kind of learning to advocate for yourself and going mm-hmm. back and listening and saying, hey, no, th- these are my rates. I'm going yeah. to stand by my rates. Because, yeah. um, you know, you've put in so many years and, like, of what? and yeah, and, like, mm-hmm. effort into creating the platform that you have today. That's so it's true. only fair when brands compensate you. And I find That's that, because I did start out in the States and then I mm-hmm. moved here. So that was A an shift. adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think it was still on the come up here. Mm-hmm. And again, the rates are they're very different. Yeah, very, are. very different. Yeah. Um, so yeah, having to switch that, my mind that yeah. way was, was hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Like, you know, in the States, some brands, you're even like shocked with the number that came to you. And yeah. you're like, oh, okay, great. And yeah. like, but here it's like, the number they bring you're like that's not even what I used to get paid for a story post yeah okay do you quote in dollars or do you quote in Kenya shillings dollars okay okay Mm -hmm. okay. now especially at that dollar rate yeah okay yeah that makes sense so are you with management or are you an independent I I did sign with a management team like mid last year uh-huh. um, and it's been amazing they're okay. based in the states and mm-hmm. it's a all um a company run by a black women and it's all black oh, wow. women and it's for you know black creators so like that's, that's really been cool. I feel like I don't know it's small too so I feel that you, you just you're kind of growing with them and they're really in it for you and your journey not so oh, much wow. Yes, there's a money side to it, but I also feel that they're there to also like enhance you as a person. Yeah, that's really cool. I've had so many horror stories about management um, in Nairobi. I used to have a management yeah. team here in Nairobi, and I don't know what to say about that. Yeah. But like, it seemed that yeah, they don't even they expected you to be the one who gets the clients, the jobs, that's and what then I they hear. want the commission. They want the commission. That's no. what I've been hearing. It's like you get a co- like a brand, and then mm-hmm. they're like, okay, yeah, we're still taking a percent. Yep. But what did you do? Right. You don't even respond to the email. Like what? what did you yeah. Do? yeah. Yeah. So okay. a management team has been great because also they take off the, um, just like the day to day. Sometimes that I feel like as a creator you're just irritated by by the time you actually get to the campaign so they do the whole you know negotiating everything so they just present you a deal on the table yes or no and by the time it gets to you they've you know done everything that they can to advocate for you so that just it's it's nice that sounds very nice compared to what I've I'm an independent creator, but because of all the <laughs> the horror stories I was hearing in yeah. Nairobi, I feel yeah. like every time someone would be like, "This one was telling me um, they were not, they were like 
they would receive an email and mm -hmm. they would just not tell them that the email came. That's and so cool. later when they would like look at their emails, they're like, this three brands have reached out. Why didn't you say anything? Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, they were not even your race. Like they didn't even take time to like negotiate right. nothing. They just didn't even inform you that this, that this brand reached out. Yeah. So from the horror stories I was hearing, I was always very skeptical about mm -hmm. getting management. Um, I would rather even get just somebody who can respond to... Right, almost like yeah. a, like an assistant. Of, yes. Because yeah. I find that like when you have somebody else, like I've had friends, yeah. who, they'll have a like pseudo account. Yeah. That's them, but they'll be, you know, they'll have a fake name or whatever. Oh, yeah. And they, f I feel like you can de like demand more and negotiate more when yeah. it's not When it's not you. you. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, so I had like a... A friend who was helping me with this, she would like negotiate. Um, she'd also reply the emails. She'd mm -hmm. also make sure I'm on top of, it. especially during when my bus school was very hectic. Yeah. Yeah, I would come from exams and she would have told me like this, this, and this is happening. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I've already made like the drafts for everything you need to reply. Just go approve them and send. So it was really, Perfect. really nice. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I have going on for now. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would just pay her like a flat rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's cool. Because yeah. that yeah, that also takes the pressure off of, off of me. Yeah. 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 And then how do you work on building creator relationships? This is a hard one. Because yeah. I feel like this is I suck at this so much. Me too. Um it's how do I work on it? I'm trying to work on it now this yeah. year. Uh, by just saying to, yes to, so I was already saying yes to everything mm -hmm. like creators have going on because mm -hmm. I feel like it's really fun to see somebody's brain, like the what they had in their head become a reality. Yeah, I'm really bad at collabs mm -hmm. because I don't know how to integrate um, like two separate, unless right. it's like very natural, like maybe you're traveling together. Exactly. Or, yeah. So that's what I've been trying to work on mm -hmm. actually, like. I'm trying to do more collabs. So I've been brainstorming on how I can fit better with another person, like mm -hmm. in a video. Yeah, so I've just been saying yes to people's creative ideas, but I've been terrible at collabs. I feel like last year, I feel like I had one collab. Yeah. And that's because it, it matched so well because right. he was a creator on like affirmations. Oh, that's so and like good. Yeah, so it was so easy. We both had um, affirmation cards. Mm -hmm. So I just, I literally reached out. I just told him, oh, because he was only here for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. and then he was traveling back. And I just reached out and I was like, this is my idea. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm traveling today. And then somehow missed his flight. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, so he was like, out. yeah, let's just record today. And that's the only collab I did, I feel yeah. like, the whole of last year. And it was, I thought it was hard reaching out, but it's not that hard right. really. Yeah. But it was only easy for me to reach out because I felt like, our concepts match so well. So I feel like yeah. I'm more scared when I don't know how it's gonna work it's gonna, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Fair. And you? Yeah, I'm not I'm not very good at it, I will say. Yeah. I think I'm I am shy or like an I am an introvert. Yeah. So like even when it comes to creator events, like it really oh, yeah. like scares me mm -hmm. to want to go. Yeah. Or most times I'll talk myself out of going yeah. or just get too like just socially tired to do mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So I would I would want to do more and, like, push myself. I mean, yeah. I think even being here today is definitely, like, a, a step, step outside my yeah. comfort zone. Um, and, yeah, just trying to... I think it's sometimes difficult, but, like, sitting here today again is, like... Well, like, we all kind of have a similar story. Yeah, yeah. And, like, we're all kind of going through the same thing. So it's, like, that initial, like, oh, do I slide into their DMs? Yeah, like, I say? feel like, I'm like, what do, yeah. You, yeah, what do you say? Like, hey, like, <laughs> I like your work. Would you want to do yeah, something? Yeah. Um, so I definitely, yeah, I definitely want to do more and be a little bit more out there when it comes to, like, you know, the social things that social. happen, too. Because I think you also make good connections that way. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was talking myself last year into going for the events because I was like at all of them I yeah. was just because I also like dressing up right so my thing was if I feel like I look cute I can leave the house okay because for me clothes really boost my yeah yeah and so when I went for the events that's how I made a lot of connections like now I have connections I just don't know what to say mm -hmm. so I feel like now we're in the step one yeah now we can now do like step two right yeah yeah, yeah. oh money talks money money talks I like money talks I feel yeah. like we should have more money talks as... 
Because Africans creators. don't like money, money talks, no. and then even creators don't right. like money talks. Because I think talk. it's such a, like, the space is kind of hidden. You just yeah. don't know. Yeah. And then now sitting in two spaces for myself, it's just, it's, it's hard. Because you're really like, hard. which one, like, what, I don't know. Just yeah, trying no, to it's hard. Balance. Yeah. yeah. What is your highest paid deal? Do I mention the amount or, like, I give a range to... Okay, so let's... You can give it, like, a range if a you range? don't want to say the okay. exact, exact amount. So I feel like my highest paid happened last year, mm -hmm. and the range was between 600,000 mm -hmm. Kenya shillings and 700,000 at once. Okay. So usually it's, like, broken. Maybe right. they'll come back. Yeah. Or, but this one was, like, at once. And was it for a whole campaign? Or yeah. was it several, like... You know, like individual videos. It was individual videos. Okay. So they had put everything Into in like a one. bundle. So it wasn't only videos. Okay. It was like oh, appearances nice. and then like, yeah. So there was just a lot of different things mm -hmm. other than videos. And that's what brought the price a oh. bit higher than yeah. if it was just Yeah. Because I think for event appearance, I think they really should... Because I have that as on my rate card, but yeah. a lot of places are like, you know. Just when, come. Just come. And it's like, well, you know, you want me to dress up according to a theme. Yeah. And you want me to have done my makeup. And then you want me to create stories on yeah. there just to post for free. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And these, the events were kind of far mm -hmm. also. So they were like, we're also going to give you a deposit so mm -hmm. that you're able to That's so thoughtful. reach this. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Wow. Yeah. How nice. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that one was, yeah. was really nice. I really it's liked nice. that whole working situation. Yeah. yeah. What was the lowest deal you've ever taken and why did you take it? So I think the lowest one I ever took, I don't know whether to base this on last year mm -hmm. or like the entire, because I feel like if I'm talking about lowest when I started, yeah, of course you also take my anything. rates were exactly. low. Exactly, and you're like, you just want to get your name out yeah, there. Yeah, let's just, let's begin. Yeah. So maybe I'd start with last year. Mm -hmm. I'd say the lowest one I took was 20,000 Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. But it was because it was a brand um, I've worked with before. Mm -hmm. And so we'd done, like, we've done, at this point, we've done so many mm -hmm. campaigns together yeah and so they were saying how they were just they were transparent they were like we're having a problem with like cash flow at the moment so mm -hmm. would you take this mm -hmm. and so I said yeah I took it and then it was so funny because now after some time the cash flow problems ended okay. and so they sent a contract now with like my rates but higher because oh, they were wow. like because you supported us when yeah. we were like yeah, so I took that, that one as well last okay. year. And right. then I took now the new contract where they had like almost doubled it because they were like, thanks for, mm -hmm. you know, last time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. And how do you usually negotiate with brands? Okay, so I feel like I go to my mom a lot. So my mom works in human resource. She also does Perfect. talent management mm -hmm. and she's also a life coach. Shout out to my mom. Yeah. Um, so anytime I have a contract, I go there like, mom! Yeah. Yeah, what do I say? Right. So she has like all the HR responses to this is too low but nicely or mm -hmm. like this is no, we're not doing this or like when someone is like our flat rate is this when yeah. they've not even asked for your rate exactly. card. Yeah, she'll be like tell them something like oh good morning, thank you for reaching out. Yeah. Um I love the brand, whatever I love the idea, but unfortunately, these are my rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't also do flat rate. So she gives me all the wording, negotiation, yeah. yeah, like wording. And then I throw in a little bit of like my legal knowledge mm -hmm. um, in terms of negotiating like the best outcomes, the worst outcomes after negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, I also ask sometimes if I've seen um, some of my, the people who I talk to in the industry are also in the campaign. I'll ask them mm -hmm. like how much... Yeah. Are they offering you for, yeah. for what, what, and what? So yeah. that I can know, are they just taking me for, for idiots, exactly. you know? Or yeah. are they actually putting everything at par with other creators? Because most times you'll find they'll offer you really low, and then you ask your friend, and they're like, I, yeah, they said the same, but then I said, no, I can't do it for that yeah. price, and they said this, and they said, fine. Right. So they're just waiting for you to say, 
yes, yes or no. to the lower one. Yeah. And they're like, thank God. And then they've saved so much from now what they would have paid you. Yeah. yeah so I do that. I ask, I, I ask around and then combine my knowledge as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then what is the number one thing you ask brands before you collab? So the first thing I always ask, um, what's the before collabing? So is this before I signed the contract? Maybe. Or like, yeah, yeah. Because that would be part of what you're, you know, asking yeah. for, right? I always ask if they can. My first question these days is if there's a deposit. Mm. Because I do like working with deposits, especially because my ideas are also, they require money. Right. So if like, if I can have some money up already front. from up front from mm -hmm. the brand, then it's so much better because I can say like, for example, um, my skating video I was given a deposit, so I was able to go to the designer, have the costume designed. Mm -hmm. I was able to just get everything in order mm -hmm. before even filming yeah. to pay my videographer because I also right. used a videographer exactly. for that video. Yeah, and so and I like paying Kenyan creatives to yeah. help me with my project. Yeah. So I like asking if there's any way we can get a deposit. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And what, um, do you diversify your income as a creator? Mm -hmm. Or do you, are you, I guess you are a lawyer too, right? Yeah, but this, now this year is the year I wanted, so last year is the year I want, I was, I didn't really have space mm, to, or time, that, yeah, or time yeah. to diversify my income, really. Because it was like, a brand comes, I'm reading, a brand, I'm filming at 3 a.m. So I was like, this year, once I'm done with my, exams mm -hmm. is when I want to go into diversifying my income mm. in terms of I want to develop now my, my, my own ideas that I can earn from mm. independent of whether a brand approaches me for the or, month yeah. or not. Yes, yeah. yeah, so I'm working on that this year, okay. so not yet. Yeah. So here are yours, you're going to act as like the agony aunt because okay. we have like some scenarios. Cool. Um, let me start with this one. So. Okay. How do you ask for compensation when a brand wants to repost your content? Hmm. That's, yeah. Cause, but sometimes they don't ask, no. which isn't great. But yeah. I think um, maybe sliding in, because they probably, you, you, know, they, you know, they want to repost your content because maybe they've messaged you. Yeah. Um, and I think just kind of, you know, saying thank you so much for reaching out. I'm glad that you love my video. Mm -hmm. However, if you'd like to repost it, I'd really appreciate compensation, you know, as you're using this to sell one yeah. of your products. Mm -hmm. um, and then even maybe open the door for a longer term collaboration. Mm -hmm. Being like, I, you know, I see that you've liked what I've created. Would, would you, you be, want? Oh, yeah, yeah, would you be open That's to discussing yeah. having, you know, me to create for a few more products, whatever mm -hmm. it is. But I think, yeah, just kindly asking and saying, you know, if this video did take time and effort and if you're going to repost yeah. it and put it on your channels, I would appreciate some compensation. Yeah, because that must happen a lot, especially because you create fashion, yeah, travel content. Yeah, it does, content. it does. And yeah. you're like, eh, you're going to... And then they tell you, yeah, you get exposure on our page. <laughs> no thanks, yeah, can't eat exposure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, that's, that's really smart. Yeah, that's what I would say. And like following up to ask is really smart. Um, let me pick one long one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do I respectfully say to a brand, mm -hmm. I know you're lying when you say you have no budget. Mm -hmm. I also know you're paying other influencers. Context, I reached out first, so mm -hmm. I think you, yeah. I do a lot of self-pitching and I run into a lot of brands telling me that they have no budget for influencers at the moment or right. if they have the budget, they'll completely lowball me. Yeah. Any advice? That's tricky. I also That's ask. I'd probably ask AI to help me write that email. Yeah. Chat GPT, come in clutch. But um, yeah, that's a, It's a tricky one, also, because as you a creator, you also yeah, yeah, you approach them. You feel that rejection. You're yeah. like, is there something wrong with me? Yeah. But I don't think so. I think still keeping to how you value yourself and your rates, and mm -hmm. just going back again and kindly saying, you know, like. I don't know how I would word it, but the gist of the email would be, 
you know, like I've, thank you so much for mm -hmm. taking the time to respond to me. However, yeah. these are my rates, you know. And um, I don't know if you would put in there, I, like. Like, would you I, say you asked other Yeah, answers? like, you know, that's a tough one. To yeah, because most times know, yeah. contracts have the non-disclosure mm -hmm. confidentiality. Mm -hmm. So it's like, would you put them in trouble? Right. Yeah. But I would just say, you know. No, being almost like hiding it under the industry tag of being like with, you know, the few relationships I have in the industry. I've been made aware that they are, there is, you know, some budget and I'd mm. appreciate if you would, you know, compensate me for my craft. Okay. Um, but like just kind, like kindly, kindly but also yeah. if they're a brand that are not willing to budge, then maybe it's like not, not meant to be. Yeah, it's not yeah. for you. And somebody will come along that like, values the work the work that's that true, you that's put true. in that's yeah. really true okay yeah i would ask my mom too honestly mm -hmm. yeah because that's a it's has yeah you'd have to kind of have to coat really it. Word it really yeah nicely um one more mm -hmm. so there's a company reached out in june and they said they couldn't afford me mm -hmm. context my rates are low it's 200 dollars for video stories and a photo package so for, wow. for that yeah I left the email alone because I didn't know how to respond they reached out again and now I'm wondering how to say I'm only accepting offers as per my rate sheets but nicely yeah but again you know thank them for reaching out yeah. um and just say currently I'm you know only able to take brand deals at this level yeah. if you do end up having you know if you expand your budget, budget or you want to come out. back in yeah. you know a few months you can reach out at the door is open mm -hmm. but as for now like these are these, these are my are rates. rates and those yeah. are pretty fair rates that, that those are pretty yeah they're yeah. pretty fair rates so I feel like it's you'd even have more basis to reply like right. please yeah come on this is even discounted exactly yeah. Okay, I feel yeah. like this one is for you, especially because um, you do fashion content. Uh -huh. So, a well-known company is asking to pay me with an Amazon gift card. Mm -hmm. How do I nicely ask for cash? Yeah, again, it's, yeah, you just be like, I'm, you know, a Amazon is not going to pay for the videographer that's going to come that's in and take the videos. But say it in a nice way, yeah. uh, obviously. But, um, yeah, it would be like, I, you know, really love your brand and, I really would love to work with you. However, I would only be able mm. to accept cash for this. For this, yeah. Because, um, it, yeah, it's very easy sometimes to, to fall into... To accept the gift. It, to accept the gift. But, like, true, like, we have to kind of look at it, and I keep telling myself, it is a job that yeah. pays bills, and gift cards do not they don't pay, pay bills. bills. Um, so just being... Because, yeah, it, it is... More than I sometimes think of it as it's more than a nine to five job because yeah. like even when you scroll, like sometimes it's not just like mindlessly scrolling. I feel mm -hmm. like I can't sometimes enjoy just scrolling because your like brain is always going like, oh, I should do this yeah. for that or this, yeah, yeah. you know. So like, and it it you're putting you rather than you mm -hmm. know like a nine to five job. You close the door and finish and when leave. you leave. Yeah. Um. So there should be compensation for you know. That's true. The craft and, like, the things that you've learned. You've learned how to edit. That's a skill. You've learned yeah. how to take photos. That's a skill. That's like, true. there's so many things that are involved in being a creator that compensation is only fair. That's true, honestly. Yeah. It's the way you just have to stand on business. But sometimes mm -hmm. standing on business will have you broke. Yeah. You just have to accept <laughs> right. that, yeah, you're broke, but at least you're standing on business. Right. <laughs> That's true. And, like, creating this, like, precedent for yourself that you're known yeah. as, like, not the one who just kind of takes everything. That's true. Because, you know, sometimes they'll have you on a list. Like, this one, just ask her. Yeah. She's going to, she's going to accept. Like, they have the list of people who mm -hmm. they'll accept anything. And then mm -hmm. the ones who, they'll even, they'll even be like, listen, with this one. Yeah. We like, can't approach. You have to approach, like, very nicely. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's, I think it's a good thing yeah. to kind of have that for yourself. Um yeah, and I think more of us need to, so that, like, collectively, yeah. they, I don't know, some respect us a little bit more. Yeah, I keep saying we need a creator's union. That's what I've be, been pushing. Yeah. I've been pushing this. Uh, yep. Yeah, because I did a dissertation. My entire law school dissertation was based on um, the future of content creation in mm -hmm. terms of the law. Mm -hmm. And so I went into a bit of, like, tax and everything, mm. but I was like, the only way this is going to work is if we have a union so that you're right. not the one 
pushing that message of pay people and then they yeah. blacklist you. Completely so if it's at right. least a union, it's all that's together. one voice pushing yeah. it, then that, I feel like that's going to be much yeah. better. Yeah, and it's like the future too. It's yeah. like every, you know, every brand now is looking at content creators yeah. and wanting to be on socials yeah. and that's just the way it should be. Yeah, that's what I'm pushing. I've been presenting my dissertation here. I like, like it. Let's, let's I like it. it. Yeah. So what's your final message to content creators or anyone looking to become a content creator? I would say, it's a question I usually get in my DMs a lot. Oh, of yeah. like, oh, like, how did you start? I think, yeah. just start. Like, just Dead post ass. your content. I'm saying. Like, post whatever you want and, like, find, you know, because, like, there's, I mean, you find content creators who do, like, all sorts of things. Like, yeah. there's so many different niches and, like, there's a space for you on the internet that, like, somebody else is looking, you know, for whatever you're putting out there. Yeah. So just just start and, just like, begin. Just, just begin. Because I think you, I mean, even for myself, like, YouTube has been, like, the biggest kind of mountain I've had of, like, yeah. being so scared. Yeah. I think I've even asked you before. Like, yeah. I just, it scares me and it's like, oh, I want all the equipment to be able to have it good quality. Mm -hmm. But I think... Just, just, I think begin. just start. And so I'll take my own advice too and just And just start? start. Yeah. Yeah, so you started, like you told us, you gave us a link. Yeah. And then you didn't post yeah. the link. I posted one video. <laughs> you posted one video, and yeah. And then I dipped. Yeah. So, yep. We're excited now. Yeah. I'm always saying like, honestly, I know it's a bad way to look at things, but mm -hmm. life is so short. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't need anything but yourself to begin. Yeah. And you're not going to figure out your niche while journaling right. and, and sitting down and wondering, mm, what could be my niche? You're only going to find it. You might first start your first niche mm -hmm. and then hate it and then completely yeah. pivot. And but even you, your life, like yeah. you get like, I feel like now I've entered like a new side of TikTok, like bridal yeah. TikTok. Oh. And I'm like, who's this? Oh. And, like, and I never thought I'd be like, all the videos on my feed would be that. But yeah. now it's like, it's like the new season of my life, right? Yeah, so like exactly. my content will reflect that too. Exactly, yeah. Um, so just, just, just start. start it. Pick as up your phone. Yeah, as long as you're yourself, I feel like that's your biggest yeah. asset. Um, everything else will come, money for equipment. all. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you'll even find like, if you're not yourself and you have your equipment and you have, it's going to feel like something is missing right. or like it's it's so much work because you're having to it's pretend so to be, to be someone else uh, yeah, yeah it's not going to be enjoyable and so to figure out your niche to all these things you just have to start you have one yeah. voice one body one face in this lifetime yeah you just have to stand on business with that one body one face one everything it's not going to change True. unfortunately right yeah. now so yeah just do it yeah just yeah. do it i like that yeah. okay give us the tea have you got any future exciting projects coming up? Ooh, I do. I feel like I've been planning. I've been pla Oh, I've been waiting to get out of law school. Oh, my God. When do you finish? I'm not even done, oh but okay. in the next six months, okay. I should be wrapping up. But even for that, I just said I'm going to do it and suffer while I'm in it and mm -hmm. just see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like a lot of people have been telling me, oh, I could listen to you all day. So, you know, we may be looking at the podcast. I love that for a you. bit. That would be great. Yeah. But then also, I have like, I had launched affirmation cards mm -hmm. before, but I feel like I launched them prematurely. Okay. Because in my head, I knew I was an affirmation babe. Mm -hmm. But then I had not shown anybody I was an affirmation babe. And I feel like this is something creators do a lot. Yeah. It's like, I know I'm this. Who you are, yeah. Yeah. So you think everybody knows. But nobody knew I was making fashion content. And so I said, let me take a year to show people now this other mm -hmm. side of me as like an affirmation, delusional. Yeah. yeah. And so that when I launch them, mm -hmm. it makes now a lot more sense. sense. That makes yeah. But I guess you, you live and you learn, right? Yeah. So you like learn from that first launch and you'll do it better the next time. Yeah. So I'm like, I finished those ones. They, I sold them and now I'm doing like a new everything so that yeah. yeah so you can just watch out for that That's yeah exciting. what about you you must have a lot coming up like yeah it's <laughs> yeah. there's yeah there's like little things that have happened and big big massive things mm -hmm. so um one thing that I'm like really excited to sharing is a new part of my life that yeah. I haven't shared online before That's very cute. and it's a little bit more homey so that's going to Ooh. come up in the year 
year. Um, oh, and I'm excited because it's just like a different side of me that I haven't shown, but still a side that like, you know, my friends and family be like, oh yeah, that's, that's we, what we you know. like. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, kind of like opening the door a little bit and like taking you through the journey of this next phase of my life. Oh, yeah, and congratulations. Thank you. I'm excited Thank you so for much. that. Thank I'm living you. through you. Oh, thanks. Because thanks. my friends, they're slacking. There's nothing. It's Bridget. okay. You'll, it'll happen. No, no, day. there's not. Like, you know how there needs to be, like, a bit of drama, just a yeah. bit. There's like no someone drama. eloped right. here and there. There's no there's there, I may be, I need to be the one. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's you. Maybe it's you next. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can come join the bridal side. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be there. You're going to yeah. be my bridal FYP. When I see I'm like, oh, oh thanks. cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, plug yourself. Yeah. Where can people find? Okay, I feel like you can find me on TikTok mm-hmm. and Instagram um, as, okay, I need to change this. But for now, it's Temina Cavelwa, but also Temina Semo. Type in any. Don't know which one is which. Um, I'll change it, though. I'll change it yeah. to all be the same. Yeah. Nice. I'm on Instagram and TikTok and, like, really enjoying Pinterest right now, too. Oh, yeah. And all of them are at Thank you, Creators on Creators, for having me, Tamina, and Hallie. We've had such an amazing time. I've learned so much. I'm going to literally binge watch this video over and over and over. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and follow Creators and on Creators for more of these fun episodes. Oh, wow.